All right, let's see if I'm actually recording. Are we recording? Huh, chat box open, pause recording, all of these lovely things, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I hope that we can show the screen. I guess what ultimately what I need to do is pause, pause share. Give my computer a minute. Uh, is it still recording? Pause record. All right. Huh, let's see what happens. Okay. So the whole purpose of all of this is to, rubbing my apologies in advance, uh, the way that all this shows up is, I'm just using this to review the answers for the midterm for PG-111. Um, also as a test to make sure I know what I'm doing. So I apologize in advance. Uh, we have the screen up for the midterm exam. I'm going to keep this on YouTube for the rest of the month. I'll delete it April 1st. Um, so go through the answers uh, and I'll finish grading and uploading your actual grades onto Blackboard this evening. So of course, you recall that there were three short answer options. Uh, you chose one. So I'm gonna go through all three of the options as well as the answers that I was looking for. Uh, number one, what are the five principles for understanding politics? How does, the, how does each principle help us understand political behavior? Uh, in your answer, identify and define each principle and describe how each principle helps us understand political behavior. So what I'm looking for is of course, rationality. All political behavior has a purpose institution, institutions structure politics, collective action, all politics is collective action, policy, political outcomes are the product of individual preferences, institutional procedures, and collective action, and then history, how we got here matters. Uh, by rationality, I'm talking about by understanding political behavior is purpose-driven, we can understand why people do what they do. For institutions, uh, the foundation of our political system is ever evolving. Classic rules include rules for decisiveness, principal agent delegation, jurisdiction, agenda setting and vetoes for collective action. Politics requires people to work together. How do people come to agreements? How do they pay any costs associated with collective goods while discouraging free riding and the tragedies of the commons uh, for policy? How do preferences and institutional rules combine to yield policy change? And then for history, the present is often influenced, heavily influenced by past choices that are difficult or impossible to reverse. For number two, what is federalism? What are the four stages slash eras of federalism? In your answer, I want you to define federalism and identify and define each stage slash era of US federalism. Uh, federalism is the division, division, division of powers and functions between the national government and state and local governments. Dual, okay, and the three eras are, what, well, three, four eras are dual federalism, aka layer, layer cake, cooperative federalism, regulated federalism, and then new federalism. Uh, dual federalism refers to state and local governments exercising the most important powers. It's called dual federalism because the duties and operations of the different levels of government remained more strictly separated. Uh, first, cooperative federalism uh, refers to supportive relations and partnerships between federal government and state and local governments on various policy issues. Use of grants and aid as well as categorical grants uh, for regulated federalism. The federal government dictates national standards that the states must meet or rules they must follow. Uh, we see an increased use of unfunded mandates, which are national standards and programs imposed on the state and local governments without funding. And then finally, under new federalism, we have efforts to craft policies that give more discretion to the state, use of block grants and decreased use of unfunded mandates. And then finally, for number three, 
Using a real life example of your choice, explain how the five principles of politics can be used to explain why the government does what it does. Uh, basically, I wanted you to choose a real life government or political situation, either discussed in class or in the readings, or one that you learned or heard about through the media. And using the five principles of politics, explain how and why the government actors did what they did. Uh, of course, recall the five principles of rationality, institution, collective action, policy, and history. And so there's a lot of leeway depending upon what example you used. Moving onward to uh, the second page in your answer booklet was talking about the extra credit. Of course, the extra credit was uh, the Bill of Rights or the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, which ensures certain rights and liberties for the people. List each amendment and the, uh, and the right slash liberty that the amendment provides. So of course, Amendment 1, uh, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Number two, a rail regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Three, no soldier shall in times of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by the law. Four, the right of the people to be secure in their own persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue upon probable cause supported by an oath or affirmation and particularly describing the places to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Five, no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on present or indictment of a grand jury, except in cases arising in land or naval forces or in the militia, when in actual service of time of war or public danger, nor shall any person be subject for the same events, offense twice, put, jeopardy, put in jeopardy of life, limb, or nor shall they be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. Six, in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been, shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law and be informed to the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, to have compulsory process for obtaining blah, 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 witnesses in his favor, and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. Uh, Amendment seven, in suits at common law, where the value, the, the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right by trial of jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by jury shall be otherwise re-examined in any court of the United States than according to the rules of the common law. Eight, excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. Nine, the enumeration of the constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. And then 10, the power is not relegated to the U.S. by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, or reserved to the states respectively, or to the people. If you wrote down, identify, so if you only wrote down numbers one through ten, you got two and a half points. If you managed to correctly identify the wording of each amendment to each number, you got the full five points. All right, now let's get into this multiple choice. One, holding a political office for which one is running for re-election is called D, incumbency. Two, how long is the term of office for a U.S. Senator? C, six years. Three, the power to impeach and remove from office, move the president from office belongs to A, Congress. Four, the type of government where citizens run the government by electing public officials and or becoming public officials is called a, a democracy. Five, a government with specific limits on what governments control and how power 
political power is exercised is called B, a constitutional government. Six, a government with a small group of landowners, military officers, or wealthy merchants controlling most of the decisions is known as B, an oligarchy. Seven, in 1773, the British government granted a monopoly on the export of tea from Britain to the politically powerful East India Company, which sought to bypass the colonial merchants and sell the tea directly to the colonies. The merchants called on their radical adversaries for support, and the most dramatic result was the A, Boston Tea Party. Eight, Daniel Shays, a former army captain, led a mob in rebellion against the Massachusetts government in order to B, prevent or flip, 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 foreclosures on debt-ridden farmlands. Nine, refers to conflicts and struggles over the leadership structure and policies of government or the struggle of who gets what, when, and how is B, politics. 10, the ability to defeat a measure when it comes up for consideration or has received preliminary approval is called A, veto power. 11, because individuals involved in the decision-making process often have different goals and preferences, it can be very difficult to orchestrate B, collective action. 12, in the 1960s, when Strom Thurmond spoke for over 24 hours in an attempt to block a piece, piece, piece of civil rights legislation, he used B, the filibuster. 13, which American government institution did the framers intend to be the closest or more, most similar to the people? D, the House of Representatives. 14, which term best describes the legislative assembly, such as Congress, that is divided into two chambers or houses? That's D, bicameral. <laughs> 15, which clause in the Constitution extended civil rights to all persons? B, equal protection clause. 16, compensatory actions to overcome the consequences of past discrimination and to encourage greater diversity are known as B, affirmative action. 17, representation style where, oops. Oopsies, one moment. 17, representation style where legislators believe that they have been selected by their fellow citizens in order to do what the legislator thinks is right or is best for the constituency is D, the trustee style. 18, imagine your university want to increase racial diversity among the student body. Which of the following policies best reflects the current constitutional status of affirmative action policies according to Supreme Court findings? D, your university may consider race as an admission, as a factor in admissions decisions as part of a holistic review of each new applicant's file, but may not use such quotas or automatically award extra points to racial minorities. 19. From 1993 through 2010, the Department of Defense's policy towards homosexuality in the armed services is known as C, don't ask, don't tell. 20. True or false, the original U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights guaranteed the right to vote. That is B, false. Twenty-one, when con which convention states that persons under arrest must be informed of their legal rights, including their right to counsel before being placed under arrest and or during police interrogation? That is B, the Miranda Rule. 22, which standard is afforded to gender discrimination cases? That's B, intermediate scrutiny. 23, tired. 23, the federal courts took the lead in combating segregation, but faced a number of hurdles in implementing their decisions until Congress passed the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Which feature of the American political system best explains the difficulty the courts had in enforcing their rulings on desegregation? That is D, separation of powers. 24, which, of the which feature of the American political system best explains the ability of Southern states to resist court-ordered desegregation following Brown v. Board? That is B, federalism. 25, what is the term for 
choosing the chairs of congressional committees based on which member has served on the committee the longest. That is A, the seniority rule. 26, racial segregation that is a direct result of law or official policy is known as C, de jure segregation. 27, constitutional objections to the death penalty often invoke B, the Eighth Amendment's protections from cruel and unusual punishment. 28, when the District of Columbia seized some private property and then sold it to promote economic development, it D, exercised the power of eminent domain. 29, speech that directly incites fighting, speech that directly incites damaging conduct is known as A, fighting words. 30, the Supreme Court's deliberation on whether or not Frank Palco could be tried twice for the same crime in the case Palco versus Connecticut exemplifies questions about constitutional protection against A, double jeopardy. 31, the clause in the Bill of Rights that protects a citizen's right to believe and practice whatever religion he or she chooses is known as the B, free exercise clause. 32, the notion that each citizen, that each American is a citizen of the national government and separately a citizen of one of the states is known as D, dual citizenship. 33, which form of speech is the most consistently protected? That is B, political speech. 34, a provided good that can be enjoyed by anyone and that cannot be denied to anyone once it's been offered is known as an A, public good. 35, which American document is the most important set of institutional procedures that determine how the government is ran? That's A, the Constitution. 36, the best known arguments supporting ratification of the Constitution were the 85 essays written by Hamilton, Madison, and Jay. These essays are collectively known today as C, the Federalist Papers. 37, James Madison wrote in Federalist 51, the power surrendered by the people is first divided against two distinct governments. Then the portion allotted to each is subdivided against, subdivided against the, among distinct and separate departments. Hence a double security arises to the powers of the people. The different governments will control each other at the same time that each will be controlled by itself. Which constitutional principle is best reflected by this statement? That is C, checks and balances. 38, how did the three-fifths compromise uh, compare to the Northerners' preference on the issue of slavery and representation? C, states with relatively more state, states with relatively more slaves gained representation in Congress and were thus better able to protect the interests of slave owners. 39, the presidential veto power over legislation the power of the Senate to approve presidential appointments and judicial review over acts of Congress and presidential actions are all examples of the principle of, of which examples of the principle in America in the American political system of B checks and balances. Whew. Da, da, da. Give me a moment, y'all. 40, the idea that states should oppose increasing authority of the national government is known as A, states' rights. 41, the system of government in which the Constitution divides power between a central government and the regional government is known as B, federalism. 42, true or false, powers not granted to the federal government in the Constitution are reserved for the states and the people. A, true. 43, the role of the judicial branch in the separation of powers has depended upon B, the power of the courts to exercise judicial review. 44, the obligations imposed on state government by the national government without any funding at all is known as D, unfunded mandates. 45, 
which term best describes federal subsidies of special state and local activities? What am I wrong? Yeah, 45. B, grants and aid. Oops, my bad. So I'll read it again. 45, which term describes federal subsidies of special state and local activities? B, grants and aid. 46, if a couple marries in Texas as regulated by state law, then Missouri must also recognize that marriage according to the blank clause, even though the couple was not married under Missouri state law. That is B, the full faith and credit clause. 47. All right. I don't know why it's doing it like that. Why is it doing that? I don't know why it's doing that. Here. 47. The fact that the Supreme Court can rule an act of Congress invalid is an example of D, checks and balances. 48, well into the 20th century, most efforts made by commerce, commerce, Congress to regulate commerce were blocked by the Supreme Court's interpretation of the idea of federalism, with the primary barrier being the concept of D, interstate commerce. 49, what is the general term used to describe the formal political arrangement by which a land and its people are governed or ruled? That is B, government. 50, the designated domain over which institutional actors have the authority to make decisions is referred to as jurisdiction. A, jurisdiction. So this is the end of the review for the midterm exam. I'll keep this up until, uh, April 1st, uh, the way that I learned, I'm going to try and figure this out. So it looks like I have to do this via Zoom. And after I do this via Zoom, I will upload the video onto YouTube. I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to finagle uh, while I stream this on Zoom that I can still stream this live on YouTube. We'll figure it out. But in the meantime, uh, if you want to try and crash the Zoom party, I learned that I can have up to three or four people at a time in my Zoom meeting. Uh, my ID number for Zoom is 727-578-5459. Once again, 727-578-5459. Uh, that's my meeting ID number. Uh, if not, you can catch it when I put it on YouTube and I'll try to respond to those as quickly as possible. So, see you all Monday when we try this again for realsies. <laughs>